Hi guys and girls, it's Tom Panos here, coming to you for live stream from um, um, a Greece in a place called Kalamata, and I'm just going to wait for this audience to build up. I'm really sorry for the delay in uh, having this stream start off uh, late, but the reception uh, where I am is um, extremely poor, and um, I'm hoping that um, you're able to hear me loud and clear now. Um, and can I just get a show of hands or a comment if um, we're getting strong reception or whether it's buffering and um, whether you can hear me. There's some great Greek music going on in the background. Good evening, uh, Bryce. How are you going? Um, so, guys and girls, I'll just wait for this audience to, uh, to build up. If you want to press that share button in the meantime, um, I'd love you to do that. Hey, Joe. Um, and can I just get a few comments? Kalimera, Nick, how are you going? Um, can I just get a show of hands? Can you hear me loud and clear? Hey, Jay. Jay's married to a Greek girl. Hey, Pete from Geelong. Beautiful. So, guys and girls, just a few comments. Um, can you hear me loud and clear? Hey, Emil, how are you going? So, can hear you. Fantastic. Guys and girls, I'm going to stay in this spot and... Um, I'm just going to, you know, uh, share with you what um, I've written some really important notes that I want to talk to you about today. Um, the first thing is that, you know, yesterday was a really interesting day because I actually, uh, uh, hey Manos, how are you going? Um, I actually uh, visited an uncle of mine in what is known as uh, an asylum in Kalamata, which is, you know, a place where people uh, 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 need help that have got uh, mental health issues. And uh, he's been there for, um, you know, well over um, um, a decade. Um, he's been unwell for uh, most of his life. But it was really interesting, you know, because um, as I... Um Oops, sorry, guys. Um, as I sat there... Uh, by the way, guys and girls, if you haven't shared it, share, share it now. Um, as I sat there, um, you know, uh, interviewing him... Uh, sorry, I'm in a mental blank. I wasn't interviewing him. As I sat there, by the way, as you can see, this is the bar. It's called Del Mar Bar in Kalamata. And um, what I might do is just sit myself down here um, and um, do the rant from here. Just bear with me for a moment. Guys, how are we going? Okay, fantastic. So, um, hey Simon, how are you going? Let's wait for this audience to uh, just build up a bit more. Hey Georgie, from the same village. Um, hey Leanne, awesome. Good luck in your finals. The olives from Kalamata are the best. By the way, whenever you uh, hear the word Kalamata olives in a Greek salad, this is the place that they come from, Kalamata. Okay, so guys and girls, let me get back to what I was saying about um, uh, um, going and in, uh, visiting my uncle. I actually asked him, and he's look, you know, he's he's not in a greater state. If I, you know, showed you an image of him, it was a bit scary actually being in 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 that place known as an asylum. But one of the things that I noticed about it was that um, when I asked him three, four times, I said, "How are you?" He says, "I'm really happy here. I like it here. The people are good. They treat me good. I've got friends here, and I'm really, really happy." And by contrast, about an hour later, I went back to my hotel room and I was talking to someone there that works there and, you know, he's he's 100% healthy. Um, he's got every reason in the world to be happy. Um, he's got a job working in a reasonably nice hotel and um, he was just whinging and a negative. And then it made me realise, you know, just the power of perspective, you know, the ability that one person has got a certain amount of situations and conditions and then another person has got another set of situations and conditions and that they just choose to look at the, you know, things differently. And I, I, I think that saying, I think Dr. Wayne Dyer said it, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at ch um, change. So um, I just think that you know, it's so important. And I've just written a couple of few notes. I was reading, I've been doing so much reading while I've been away. And um, I was reading about George Clooney and George Clooney um, struggled in his first few years. When he'd go off to auditions, um, he got rejected and rejected and rejected because he'd always go in with this mindset that 
what that mindset was that he would have to try and impress the producers and he put a lot of pressure on himself because he felt that he wasn't good enough and he'd have to actually elevate himself and producers could see that they could actually see someone that was not very confident and then what actually happened is George Clooney went away and he reinvented it himself and he actually thought about it he thought to himself you know what producers need actors they need they need to have people to actually fill roles they need people to actually um, they need to get good quality people it's their job and a producer is in a need of that and then what actually happened was that he came back and he became hot property and this is a really good lesson because whether you're pitching for a listing at a listing presentation I don't want you to go in thinking to yourself that you know you've got to beg there for the business don't forget that person interviewing you is also looking for a problem to be solved they're looking for that person that's going to come along and change their life because they've got a very stressful situation or a situation you know the, the, the single girl or guy who wants to go and approach that stranger and they have that what you know Seth Godin calls the tyranny of choosing of being scared of 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 of, of panicking of getting out of your comfort zone don't forget that person there that's on their own they're also looking for that special person potentially to change their life so as Jess Simpson says we're all hot property so I want you to start thinking to yourself you know what do you bring to the table because when you bring something to the table you say to yourself that I'm actually benefiting that other person and you'll find that you'll actually bring more of you out into the world and into business so I thought that was a great story about George Clooney coming back and realizing that they also producers had a problem that needed to be solved and he had to re-examine what he brought to the table what do you bring to the table because if you don't bring anything to the table you might end up having to just bring a low price to the table so guys and girls that's the first thing the second thing is I've got to tell you about um, hi, hi Frida and hi everyone by the way um, if I don't say hi to anyone, I mean to say hi to everyone. But if I just say hi to everyone, well, the whole rant, we won't have a rant. It'll just be a hello session. So I want to move on to the second thing. And the second thing I want to talk to you about is I had a coaching client who um, rang me up and he was desperate. And he said, Tom, I want, I want, to, I, I, I want to talk to you over the phone when you have an hour while you're overseas because... Um, I, I just want to get these two goals and I can't wait till you get back and, and I really want to have this conversation so is there any way we can you know, sit down over the phone or by Skype and have a conversation I said well look tell me more what you want to achieve out of the conversation he said Tom there's two things I want the first thing is I want to make $400,000 so I've got to write $800,000 in GCI the second thing I want is I want to get super ripped and I need someone to help me I need someone to keep me accountable I need someone just to be in my corner I said okay I said here's the deal we'll sit and have a conversation for an hour we'll fit we'll find an hour and if we don't do it now we'll do it next week when I'm back but I want to ask you this question forget about the goals forget about your two goals I want to ask you a more important question and that question is I want to ask you what price are you prepared to pay and what are you prepared to trade that's all I care about now and he goes what do you mean I said it's really simple you said to me you want to get ripped and you want to write 800,000 in GCI let's go through the price you've got to pay and what you've got to trade so we went through it and I said number one what you've got to do is you've got to start waking up early in the morning what time do you wake up he says I wake up at 7 30 I said okay that's got to change because all of a sudden you need more time in your life because to actually get ripped it means that you need to be training six times a week six times a week for about 90 minutes and in addition to that what you need to be doing is having you know six meals a day small meals measured you know good carbs lots of protein low fats 
and you need to actually have this food prepared. So I want to ask you, um, are you prepared to actually change your 7.30 a.m. to actually 5 a.m. wake-ups? And are you prepared to measure your meals? And are you prepared to go hard in the gym for 90 minutes every day? And you need to do this for around six months. That's the decision you've got to make. That's the price you've got to pay. So that's the first thing. The second price you've got to look at whether you're prepared to pay is about riding the 800 in GCI. So you're currently riding 300 in GCI. So we've got to work out a way to make another 500 in GCI. So I said to him, um, are you prepared to actually end up increasing your call rate by maybe doing an extra 40 calls per day, every day, Monday to Friday, so we can actually get your calls up by whatever you're doing now, by 200. And I said, because we need to look at that. And then what we've got to look at is we've got to take your listing presentation from a seven out of 10 to a 10 out of 10. So at the end of the day, I can tell you, you can fuck goals. What you've got to say to yourself is, what in my life am I prepared to trade? Because you might not be prepared to trade sleep. You might not be prepared to trade what you currently eat. You might not be prepared to trade your um, nightlife. Because if you're not prepared to trade it, you've got to look at another goal. So gang, I want you to start thinking to yourself that this thing about success is all about what price are you prepared to pay? What deal are you prepared to do? So gang, um, and by the way, I said that's goal number one. I said goal number two is really simple. Goal number two is this, that if you're seriously committed to it, I think that what you need to do is write yourself this. You should put a post on Facebook and have it scheduled to go out in six months. And if you aren't doing the prospecting that you said that you're gonna do, that the post is gonna go out and you're gonna have the biggest enemy you've got in your marketplace, the agent that you dislike the most, and you're gonna actually post on Facebook that this agent is a better agent to do business with than you because he or she is more productive and you've got to have that post scheduled. You've got to put a reg negative reinforcement. You've got to burn the bridges. You've got to actually do something that actually has consequences because that's the second step to change. What is the consequences of you of not doing it? And I said, you're serious about losing weight? You're serious about getting ripped? Why don't you schedule a post on Facebook and what you'll do is have you, you know, being totally naked with just a set of underwear, fat photos, and they're scheduled to go out in three months' time if you have not actually made those changes and you've stuck to the commitment. You've got to create negative reinforcements. If, what about if you're the sort of person that wants to leave work and create their own business, why don't you create a negative reinforcement and actually put a resignation letter and have it scheduled to go out by email in three months time. That is actually having no plan B. That is actually having only one option and making it work. Okay, guys and girls, I wanna move on to another conversation I had, and that was with um, someone who was another real estate coach. And this real estate coach sent me a message and he said, can I talk for five minutes? Rang him back. And he said, listen, I want you to send um, something out to your database of 25,000 people for me, if that's okay. Now, I'd spoken to this person like three times in the last two years. And I said, well, that's a bit of a strange request. And he goes, there was no harm in asking, which got me thinking. There is harm in asking. Of course there's fucking harm in asking. Because what actually happens is it puts the person in a difficult situation and to say no to them. And then it's actually bad for the person that's asking as well. Because this person hasn't earned the right to ask you. They actually are actually asking to win something on work that you've done for fucking 29 fucking years. And some fucker thinks that they're going to call you up and say, I thought there'd be no harm in asking. Of course there is harm in asking. Because what it does is it blows an opportunity for you to do later work. Because you actually don't respect that person. Because that person's looking for the quick route. That person is actually looking for actually going in there and not actually having any foreplay or earning the right. You want to get referred to someone, you need to actually be doing good jabbing. So of course it fucking matters, right? So all I'm saying to you is this, 
You know, when people say, oh, there's no harm in asking, there is harm in asking, guys and girls. What I suggest you do is you learn the concept that Gary Vaynerchuk talks about so well, and that is jab, 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 jab. You know, before you ask, before you hook, you earn that fucking right, okay? So, let's move on. I want to talk to you about, you know, Jewish people. And, um, and I was sitting on a plane with someone and I talked to him about the fact that I've got a lot of, you know, South African Jewish clients that I looked after in the Wentworth Courier when I looked after that publication. And um, we're just sitting there talking and we began talking about the Holocaust. And he was telling me about people that he'd know that the Holocaust, as bad as it was for them, had actually dramatically changed their lives. And I actually see a big similarity between those that have gone through the Holocaust, those that have had an illness like cancer, those that have had a major trauma in their life, it's an awakening because that experience, you come out a different person. And it got me thinking, what a gift it is to have something like that happen in your life. Because when you come out the other side, you come out a person that's got more gratitude. You've got a person that's got more respect. You've got a person that's got compassion. Why? Because you've learnt your own suffering. And that was the case for me. The case for me is going through cancer two times has taught me that I can't just take the assumption that everyone thinks like me and that everyone has got my own unique psychological footprint. But the truth is that people do suffer in the world, that people have got financial issues, that people have got their own health issues. And it teaches you, it teaches you that to become compassionate. It teaches you to learn other perspectives. And then it got me thinking, does someone have to go through something really bad to learn that perspective? And I didn't think you do. I think that what people should do is read biographies of other people. I think people should listen to other people about their lives that they've gone through. I think that you should actually be reading books and learning from people that have had 30 years of fuck ups and learning them in six hours. Sorry guys and girls, I'm just gonna bring this, my hands are hurting holding this um, selfie stick. So guys, what I'm gonna say to you is that I actually think to myself that the fastest way to actually learn, I mean, you wanna have, you wanna have breakfast with Anthony Robbins? Listen to his podcast. You wanna, you know, feel like you've had lunch with Brian Tracy, read the book Psychology of Achievement. Um, I'm going to actually say to you that you can learn so, every time you read a book, and remember the hand that picks up a book is never the same the hand, is never the same hand that puts it back down. I want you to understand that every time you read a book or listen to a book on Audible, what you do is you go into that person's world, and that person's world might have had 25 years of fuck ups, and you can pick that up in five hours. What a great return of investment. And you don't have to actually have gone through what everything that that person's gone through. So, um, yes, Nick, I'll have a coffee with you too. So, guys and girls, just remember that. The hand that picks up the book is never the same hand that puts it back down. Guys and girls, let me move on. What else do I want to talk to you about? By the way, I want to talk to you about the law of diminishing returns. Um, and let's talk about, by the way, share this video, guys. Share this video. The law of diminishing returns. I was thinking about it. When I had no money, I wanted money. When I got to a certain level of money, I realized it wasn't making me that much happier. And what I've learned is the only luxury I really enjoy that money gives me is flying business class on a flight of more than three or four hours. Everything else, like I go into restaurants and whether the restaurant is the best restaurant in the city or it's just an average restaurant, I just know that I basically eat the same thing. Salad or vegetables with meat or fish. And as long as the food's, you know, clean, I just have the same stuff. I realize that I don't eat more. I realize that hotel rooms, like, I've got to tell you, you know, here's the law of diminishing returns. I remember when I first started traveling in a business job, like 15 years ago, I used to freak out going into nice hotel rooms. I used to look at, you know, 
the view out of the room. And then what I noticed is, as the years went by, it had very little impact on me. So what I've learned is this, the joy you get out of something diminishes slowly. And it is the same with money. It's the fact that once you get to a certain level of money, don't think that making twice as much is gonna make you twice as much happy. In fact, in my life, what I notice is the more I'm out there, the more people want of me. And the more people want of me, the less I have on my own time. So in many ways, it actually ends up going against what I wanted right from the outset. And that is to have, you know, my own life to live a magnificent life the way I want to live my life. So um, I suppose what I'm saying is just make sure that the ladder that you're climbing up is the right ladder because I'd hate you to get up the top and realize that's not where you wanted to go. And all I'm saying to you is this, that the law of diminishing returns says this, that after a while, things like amazing views from the balcony of your hotel room or your house, amazing restaurants, um, amazing cars, they lose their impact on you. The law of familiarity says you just get used to it. And then you begin to realize that life is about people and relationships and far less about objects. Because if your life is driven by objects that's externally, can I just say to you, you'll never be happy. You'll be striving, 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 but never arriving. Because there will always be someone that will have a nicer car. There'll be always someone that'll have a bigger house. There'll be always someone who'll have a better six pack. There'll be always someone that's better looking. There'll be always someone that's better than you at your job. And what will happen is you'll suffer from this principle we'll call the gap, where you're always looking forward and you've got a total discontent between where you are now and where you can be, versus the gap where you started. And you should always look back. And by the way, as I said, be nice to people on the way up. Be cool to them because you won't know who you're going to run to on the way down. Gang, tomorrow begins the trek to Mount Athos. 20 monasteries, 2,000 monks, total seclusion. I don't know whether I'm going to have reception there. And um, I've traveled the long way to get to this place. I'm gonna spend four days there in meditation, in total quietness. Um, guys and girls, I find that it's in the quiet times that you get clarity. It's in the quiet times when you look inside, where you find peace in yourself. And for me, I'm going to give you a wrap up of um, this week at Mount Athos. By the way, Google it if you want to find out about it. Only one TV camera has ever gone to Mount Athos three years ago. Um, um, I think it was uh, CNBC or one of those. Guys and girls, I want to thank you. If you haven't pressed that share button, um, um, I'd like you to. And I'd like uh, to wish uh, all the mothers a happy Mother's Day. And um, I'd like you to leave with this thought. And that is, who will cry when you die? God bless you.